Welcome to Honolulu, Hawaii, home to the 2022 Big West Women's Water Polo Championship Tournament. The Tritons of UC San Diego and the Aggies of UC Davis quarterfinal action on the road to the Big West Championship. <music> Named after the famed Olympian and Hawaii Waterman, this is the Duke Kahanamoku Aquatics Complex on the University of Hawaii Manoa campus, where the 2022 Big West Conference Women's Water Polo Champion will be crowned this Saturday. All right, let's take a look at the brackets for the championship tournament. Up first, uh, the four and five seeds will meet UC San Diego, taking on UC Davis. The winner of that one will face Hawaii tomorrow morning. Hawaii, the number one seed, so they're the only team that receives a bye. After that, we'll have UC Irvine uh, playing a CSUN, followed by Long Beach State and UC Santa Barbara. The winners of those two matchups will then face each other in a semifinal tomorrow as well. Hi everybody, Scott Robbs along with Femka on former Rainbow Wahine great and Femka, it's postseason and you being a former player, I bet this time of year, it always made it a little bit more special, didn't it? Definitely, anything can happen during the championship and you know, it's so fun, you work towards this all fall, all spring and this is the moment, it has to happen this weekend. Wait, look at this matchup, UC Davis, UC San Diego, four and five seeds, yet yeah, they've met three times this year and UC Davis has won all three matchups. Yeah, but that still is no guarantee what we're going to see today. I think Big West Championship, the tournament, everybody is even. And what you've done in the past doesn't matter anymore. It really matters what they do today in this pool. Different circumstances, different, maybe different players, you don't know, so. Well, it should be a lot of fun in the pool here on this Thursday when we come back, the swim off. University of Hawaii Sports on Spectrum Sports. Sponsored by your Hawaii Honda dealers. When you drive a Honda, the adventures go on and on. Follow your adventures with the thrilling performance of Honda. The brand owners are calling the most fun to drive. Hurry into a local Honda dealer where new vehicles are arriving daily. Mom, what? Hey, I only said I'm covering your down payment. I talked to my banker, Ryan. I can use my home equity. Are you trying to make me cry? Everyone needs a Ryan in their life. Get your banker at ASBHawaii.com. Taco Bell Hawaii, the shredded Kahlua pork, grilled stuffed burrito, double XL quesadilla, and nachos bel grande are back. Spread the word, Kahlua pork is back, only at Taco Bell Hawaii. Join us on Outside Hawaii as we explore the many ways that people take care of the environment and each other. From the mountaintops to the ocean depths, from our Hawaiian islands to far atolls in the Pacific, Outside Hawaii takes you on an adventure to educate and enrich your life. Tune into Outside Hawaii only on Spectrum OC 16. 100% original, 100% local. Aloha, Kavika here. Catch me this week on Everything Hawaii as we explore the places and events that make our island of Hawaii so unique. Brought to you by Aloha Insurance and by KTA. You're someone special every day. Dodgers, Lakers, the World Surf League, the University of Hawaii, and the very best in high school sports and local programs. The Spectrum Networks in Hawaii. We've got you covered. 
And welcome back to the pool. Let's take a look at the starting lineups. First for UC San Diego, the Tritons keep an eye on their outstanding center, Kira Frankie, number 10. She leads the team with 52 goals. On the other side for the UC Davis Aggies, keep an eye out on their outstanding uh, player as well, Noel Weinbe Weinbelt. She's a six foot two center out of Tustin, California. She has 53 goals on the year. So about ready to begin things here in Manoa. The Aggies, the number four seed, come in 16 and 11 overall. They finished three and three in the Big West. UC San Diego, the number five seed, 19 and 10 overall, also three and three in the Big West. There actually was a three-way tie. Those two teams along with Long Beach State, they had a goal differential against opponent, and so Long Beach State won that break, tiebreaker, so they got the three seed, Davis the four, and UC San Diego the fifth seed. This is gonna be the fourth meeting uh, Femco between these two teams already this year. They played a couple of non-conference matchups in February. UC Davis won 9-7 and 11-8, and then in the conference matchup on uh, March 25th, 9-5 in favor of the Aggies. As we're about ready to begin, they're going to drop the ball, and we're underway from Manoa, the 2022 Big West Women's Water Polo Championships. We have UC San Diego here in white with the ball. And then we have UC Davis will be playing in the dark caps. Yeah, good thing we look at the caps and not the bathing suits because they had the same color bathing suits on. But you look at the caps to get an idea of uh, who is who. So the first shot is saved by the Aggies. The Aggies, their goalkeeper, Nellia McAdams. She's a junior out of Atherton, California. Both teams have very good center forward, so that's the center position right in front of the cage at the two meter. The red cone is a two meter line right there. They'll be looking to get into there, the ball on the water to the center forward. So they're playing the ball around to open her up. And that one skips into the net. There's a goal on the board first. It is UC Davis. And that's number 21, that's Ellison Clake with the goal there. 29th goal on the year for Clegg. Aggies on top early, one zip. First meeting between these two in the Big West Conference Tournament. And of course, UC San Diego, new to the Big West. This is their third year playing in the league, but their first season, there was no tournament because of COVID. Last year, they were actually the number two seed going into that one. And they were beaten by UC Irvine. And here we see a nice steal. They're doubling up on defense there, keeping an eye on the ball. That's Hungerford with the ball, taking it down. So UC Dave is looking for a quick turnaround here to see if they can get a quick other goal. But they're staying composed, and now they're just setting up in their 6-6 offense. How much of a difference is it playing this early in the morning as opposed to playing in the, uh, in the afternoon or in the evening? I guess it depends if you're a morning person or not. That's I'm personally <laughs> not. Um, the biggest benefit of playing in the afternoon is that you get to loosen out and you get to work towards the game all day. Nice save there by Bennett Bugelli, the grad transfer goalkeeper out of La Jolla, California. Here we see two saves in a row. Help from the post a little bit on that first one, but. We saw her a couple of weeks ago when UC San Diego played Hawaii. And she did a pretty good job. Yeah, very strong goalie, athletic, tall. That one's stolen away by Davis as UC San Diego tries to get inside. UC Davis is doing a really good job in defense where they are looking for the ball. They're helping each other out, and they've had two steals already in the past two defenses. That one snagged by Bugelli. UC Davis under the tutelage of Jamie Wright. He's in his 39th season as the head coach of the Aggies. And there's some talk around here that uh, this may be it this weekend for him. He may uh, decide to retire. Nobody's confirmed that, but there has been some discussion. That's a long, long time, 39 years. That's a very long time to do anything, right? Yeah. <laughs> and the Titans trying to tie it up. Nice save by the keeper for the Aggies, McAdams. 
This is the 59th meeting all time between these two schools. Of course, both have had water polo for many years at different levels, and the Aggies lead the all-time series 37-21. Yeah, most Californian teams, they see each other every every season. They're in close Multiple range. times, yeah, right? Yeah. yeah. There's a fight for the ball right there. Here. Ordinary foul, and we see some of the um, San Diego players go to offense already, trying to get that quick goal. So in water polo, there's a shot clock. It's 35 seconds. Um, when you shoot, you get a new shot clock if you get the ball back. We have to shoot within those 35 seconds. Now, of course, for eight minute quarters. Yeah. So it's a fast sport, typically lots of scoring, lots of action. Lots of whistles. Yeah, lots of whistles. And uh, a lot of the action actually takes place under the water. But we don't want to really know everything that goes on under there, do we, Femka? A lot no. of pulling and scratching and things like that. It happens. Yeah. I mean, it, it does happen, of course, but it's not as bad always. Some teams are more scrappy than other teams. Sometimes one-on-one -on -one uh, battles, they get really scrappy, but in general, it's all fairly fair play. They was looking to get it inside to wine belt. So you mentioned you'll hear the whistles quite a bit. A lot of them are just small fouls. And there's a turnaround on Rip. Did it go in? It did. It That's did. Noel Weinbelt with the center forward goal right there. And we're talking about Weinbelt. She's a good one. Goal number 54 on the year for her. Once she gets her hands on the ball, she is unstoppable. She is so strong. Such a force in the water, and especially in that position. I'm about a junior out of Tustin, California. Majority of players out of California on this UC Davis team, as is the case with UC San Diego. Team that's very young. There are quite a few freshmen that see quality minutes, but we haven't called the name of their top scorer and who's really good, and that's uh, Kira Frankie, who's also an All-American swimmer, a, a sprinter for the Try and Swim team. Stolen away again by Davis. Up to nothing here in the first period. San Diego is struggling a little bit on offense. They play very stagnant. They should move a little bit more. And here we see a turnover foul. So ball for San Diego. We've seen a lot of steals already. I think that might be a little bit of the nerve still in play for all of the players. Now, of course, the winner of this matchup will play Hawaii tomorrow in the first semifinal. It's going to be at 11 a.m. Hawaii time, which is what, 2 o'clock Pacific? What's it in the, the Netherlands? Um, we're 12 hours ahead in the Netherlands. Okay. So. so it'll be 11 p.m. in the yep. Netherlands if you're watching on ESPN Plus in the Netherlands. Most of Europe, yeah. 12 hours. Nice pass inside. A chance for the Aggies again coming up and getting the steal the fight for the ball and it's going to be uc san diego and here we saw that save on the other side before we saw that quick turnaround the goalies are doing a fantastic job right now it's a low scoring game so far only two goals skip shot nice save by davis that's uh mcadams again san diego is really is having a hard time coming close to the cage and they're shooting a lot from the outside and it's definitely goalie's game at this moment. Well, I think everybody knows Frankie's the go-to player for UCSD, right? So yeah, you're going to try to collapse your defense when they try to get the ball inside to her. Definitely. So what you can do to fight that is move more in offense. You want to swim in, make defense really defend you. If you're just all stagnant, staying in your spot, it's super, not super, but it, it's way simpler for the defense to look both ways, look where the ball is, look where the center forward is. Here we see some of that movement, but she pulls out. 70 seconds left in the opening quarter. There's a shot that skips out of bounds. Long outlet pass 
down the right side. A battle for the ball. Aggies will start their offense. 20 seconds on the shot clock, and they're still looking to go into center forward right there. Belke with the ball. Looking to get it inside. She'll try the shot, and she gets it in. Did she get it in? Yeah, she did. Oh, okay. Pelkey with the goal. That's her 15th. It looked like Bugley, uh, Bugley had it, but it slipped through her fingers, and... Yeah, Bugelli had a good look at that one, just couldn't squeeze the ball. And so three goals here in the opening stanza for UC Davis. Out to a quick start against the Tritons. We have 40 seconds on the game clock and 35 on the shot clock. So what do you do here? You kind of take your time and try to get a, a shot off before? Definitely. You, the goal of this is right now, you don't want to get a shot off so that the opponent can get the ball back and also has a chance to score again. Right, so if so you play the full shot clock, they only have five seconds. Right. Passing it around, getting it inside. But there's three players on Frankie. And there you see the first exclusion of this morning. We have a power play for San Diego, so a man down for UC Davis. We call this a six on five for a power play. So if you're UCSD, you've got to take advantage of this power play, and they do. That's a beautiful shot. She's good on her legs, and she just finds that open corner and puts it in the back of the net. Taylor Onstott with the goal, the 5'9 grad student of Carlsbad, California. Nets her 25th goal on the year. Makes it 3-1, two seconds left. So we'll be seeing a long shot from Noel Weinbelt here. And there's the last shot. Falls in the water. And just like that, the opening stanza is over. After one, it's 3-1 UC Davis here in the 2022 Big West Water Polo Championship. Malama Aina, to care for the land is an engagement between people and place. When we all malama, there's nothing we can't change. Learn how you can malama Hawaii at gohawaii.com slash malama. I wanted to wake up to the sound of the ocean. Sun and surf, that's what we were looking for. But the moment we arrived, we found so much more. We found beauty. We found adventure. We found a place we'll never, ever forget. In the Coast Guard, your career is in your hands. Become a chef, a highly skilled mechanic, operate boats, pilot planes, learn to lead. In the Coast Guard, you're a part of the bigger picture. Help others, protect our ports, secure our waters, defend our homes. Expand your options in the Coast Guard. Spectrum OC 16's weekday primetime lineup makes it easy for you to catch all your favorite shows. All the best of Spectrum OC 16, Monday through Friday in primetime. Exclusively on Spectrum. From the mountains to the sea, Spectrum OC 16 highlights our beautiful landscape and lifestyle.
were talking earlier about the UC Davis head coach. There he is, Jamie Wright, in his 39th season. He's a graduate of UC Davis way back in 1980. On the other side for UCSD, Brad Kreutzkamp in his 13th season leading this Trine water polo program. He attended San Diego State, a graduate in 1993, he played water polo for the Aztecs. So 3-1 after the first quarter in favor of UC Davis. We didn't see a whole lot of offense coming from the Tritons. They they kind of struggled in that aspect, didn't they? Yeah, yeah. I would I would love for them to move a little bit more. I think that's really how they're going to fight off Davis here and really put their their um, they will actually be able to force something in offense. Here we see it already. We see more movement. Frankie going into center there. Well, the Titans in the white, they've got a great shot chance right there, and it's ripped into the back of the cage for the goal. And that goal by Holly Main, a senior out of Newberry Park, Can California. Can see here sneak away here? Well, they're double teaming on Frankie, and it opens up other players, so it's really good to see other players step up while the defense is focusing on certain other players. And not only that, that's got to feel good to start off the second quarter with a quick goal. Yeah, I think for the coach too. I think uh, Chris Kemp definitely told them move more, make him play defense, and it pays off. I'm not, I'm not sure what he was saying to his team, but he was loud, I can <laughs> tell you that, between quarters. <laughs> Emphasizing what he wanted to see from his team. Of course, these two teams so familiar with one another, having played three times already. Yeah, it's hard playing the same opponent that many times. You uh, tend to defend the same player, so. On one side, it's nice. You know the tendencies of a player. You know exactly what moves they like, what they're good at, what they're maybe not as good at. Um, but that makes it harder to play them, play that same defensive player, because you have to be original, come up with new things. There's a quick, long outside pass. So San Diego looking more for that quick switch. And here we saw that steal that happened earlier. We see a little bit of the suit holding there and then steal for San Diego. Now we're back with UC Davis in offense. Well, UC Davis was up 3 nothing, and then the last two goals have been by UC San Diego. So we have ourselves a pretty good one, it looks like here this morning. I mean, you got the number four seed Aggies, number five seed Tritons. Both went three and three in the league play. We see San Diego. Clock is running down, and there's the shot clock. No shot able to get off them, though. Exactly. So I think San Diego, maybe Kurtz Kemp definitely told them we need to press longer, have more pressure on the ball. They're getting too many shots off, and they ran out of the shot clock, which is a really good sign for defense. Well, there's a turnover. And there we see a turnover foul on UC Davis. So San Diego ball here. The ball is live from where it is at the pool at that point in time. Where in the past it would have to be played back to where the foul was made. Right now you can just play from wherever the ball is in the pool. And then Kendall Thomas for UCSD was getting mugged in there. That one off the side of the cage. Here we see a backward exclusion and a timeout. We have a 30 second timeout here. So explain what's a backcourt? So backward exclusion, exclusion. is uh, in that battle of going to offense, the offensive player, defense going to offense, really wants to take advantage and gets ahead of it. Um, we saw a kick here from the offender um, becoming the defensive player. So she's being kicked out for 20 seconds on her offensive side of the pool. So that's what we call a backward exclusion. We also saw a couple of new swimmers coming into the pool for UC Davis. So here we have that power. Timeout or a 30 second timeout. Usually the team knows exactly what to do if there's a 30 second timeout, so the coach doesn't really need to talk to them. And that's a really, really nice save right there. That was a great save by Bujelli. I thought there's no way that one wasn't going to go in to the back of the cage, but it didn't. Yeah, good thing she's very lengthy. Her fingertips. <laughs> well, she's listed at 5'11", but probably has a bit of a longer wingspan. Yeah. 
very athletic again. She has to move all the way across the cage and she was able to still have her hands up in the air to get the ball. So here we see that beautiful, beautiful pass there and then here the fingertips. There's a lob shot just now that went over the top of the goal. Davis with the ball here. They're waiting for their center forward to get down. They're very patient, I must say. And beautiful steal there, but Noel Weinbelt with the ball. She gets it back and can't get a full shot off. And you might think there's three people riding on her back while she's turning them, but she has her, the ball in hand, and that's why there's no foul being called. So in water polo, if the ball is on the water and you're being drowned, so to say, it is a foul, usually an exclusion foul, but with the ball in hand, not everything, but a lot is, is possible and allowed. Allison played with the pass out. Come on. Here we see another exclusion on number eight for UC San Diego, that is Taylor Onstad. So we have a power play for UC Davis. Uh, Davis with a six on five advantage. You want to take advantage of a, a situation like that. It's time to go inside. Nothing really available right now. Just swing it around. So again, that's 20 seconds. And there's the quick shot. Good inlet pass. Yeah, right, the as, right as they were coming even, the excluded player was allowed back in the goal, but they got a shot off. They go to the post right here, and it's a deflection shot right in the back of the net. There's Julia Hartman, the senior of Sunnyvale with the goal. And that's her 21st on the year. We're seeing a lot of back and forward, a lot of steals, so it's still a little bit messy, but both teams did definitely change a few things during the second quarter. Here we see an exclusion on UC Davis, so power play for San Diego. Well, UC Davis just took advantage of one, see if the trains can as well. And there's a rip shot from outside into the back of the cage. That's a nice goal by Annika Arroyo, or Annika Arroyo, excuse me, the Salmora Ventura. We see here a no-look shot, so she looks like she's going to pass the ball down and she just rips it in the back of the cage. By the way, of course, you have the uh, Big West Men's Volleyball Tournament taking place starting tonight next door. Up in the bleachers behind us, the UCSD uh, men's volleyball team. Yeah, they're definitely present. We can hear them loud and well. Yeah, UC Davis doesn't have men's volleyball, so they don't have the support that the trains do. And here we see another offensive, so ball for UC San Diego. Offenses uh, are usually um, called when a player is pulling someone, their defender, to get past or get an advantage, or when they're grabbing a suit, stuff like that. San Diego with the left hander here under. What a nice shot. That's what I was the... just about to say. What yeah. an advantage it is to have a left hander. Courtney Okumura, the freshman of Los Altos. 23rd goal. She's been really good here in her freshman year for the Chinese. She's so well on her legs, very composed. She fakes, she gets into that pocket, so she makes her angle a little bit better, and she puts in a nice lob shot, well placed. And you see Okamura. So we're tied at four. Here in the second stanza, 243 left to play. We see a lot going on in offense right now. This is what we call an after goal play. There's tactics that the whole team knows exactly where to go, what to do, where to move, where the ball is supposed to go. And then you find an open player. They get it inside and that one's ripped in. And that's Noel Weinbelt again from the two meter right there. You mentioned earlier when she scored her first goal, as we take a look at the second, 
You know, they get the ball into her, she's almost unstoppable. Yeah, she's so strong. She knows really well how to get distance from her defensive player and has the time to pick a place and shoot. Look where the goalie is and put the ball away. Davis trying to put a little bit more pressure defensively. And there we see an exclusion called on you. See Davis Ellison Clay there. And then we get Okamura again with another goal. Okamura, the lefty from the right side, back to back goals to tie it up again, this time at five. Yeah, it's the first time we're even since uh, the 0 0, I believe. Well, 4 4. Oh, right, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> So this was a quick shot. The defense didn't have time to really set up yet, and they take advantage of it really quick. It's easier to score a quick six on five than that you have to wait for the defense to move. Lucy San Diego brought in some fresh bodies, about four of them just a moment ago. A lot of goals they scored compared to the first quarter. A lot of goal for goal right after each other. Yeah, it was 3-1 after the first quarter Lucy Davis so maybe the teams are warming up a bit that one's going away it's funny because when the players jumped into the pool initially before the game started they all jumped in and said oh the water's so cold <laughs> <laughs> it feels cold because the outside is so nice and warm yeah exactly I'm sure they're not feeling that way now <laughs> I don't think so either so San Diego is doing a better job in moving and they've been able to draw some uh, exclusions and opening up some shots there. Shot clock at five. There's a lob shot, but easy pickings from McAdams. So under a minute left before halftime. Big West Women's Water Polo Tournament. Hawaii, the number one seed, has a bye. They'll play tomorrow. The winner of this matchup. There's a shot smacked away by Bujeli. Shot clock and game clock are even now. 30 seconds on the clock. So will San Diego take the win this quarter? They will take the win this quarter, but will they end up top after this quarter? They got plenty of time to try to set up something. The last two times they went on the right side to Okamura. So here we see that Bujeli is also in offense, and now there's no one in the cage. So this should be an easy shot if she makes it. And will it float in? It did not in time. So the horn blows before the ball to get to the goal and we are knotted up at five of these here at halftime the first round matchup uc san diego uc davis the university of hawaii sports on spectrum sports sponsored by bank of hawaii to the next 125 years of families the next 125 years of entrepreneurs. And the next 125 years of dreamers who never stop pursuing their happiness. Mahalo for letting Bank of Hawaii help you pursue what makes you happy for the last 125 years. We can't wait to see and be a part of the next 125. You're watching Spectrum Sports. The new season just dropped. Enter the Big Dinner Box from Pizza Hut. Two pizzas, breadsticks, and wings all in one box. You'll run out of episodes before you run out of food. The Big Dinner Box, only from Pizza Hut. No one out pizzas the hut. When you drive a Honda, the adventures go on and on. Follow your adventures with the thrilling performance of Honda. The brand owners are calling the most fun to drive. Hurry into a local Honda dealer where new vehicles are arriving daily. The new season just dropped. 
Enter the big dinner box from Pizza Hut. Two pizzas, breadsticks, and wings all in one box. You'll run out of episodes before you run out of food. The big dinner box, only from Pizza Hut. No one out pizzas the hut. With OC16.TV, you never have to worry about choosing which game to watch at home or missing a game if you're on the go. Look for the Now Playing section on the homepage, find the channel you'd like to watch, sign in with your Spectrum username and password, and enjoy. Halftime here at the Duke of Hanamoku Aquatics Complex, number five and number four battling UC Davis, UC San Diego. We're knotted up at five. When we come back, the swim-off to begin the third quarter. The new season just dropped. Enter the big dinner box from Pizza Hut. Two pizzas, breadsticks, and wings all in one box. You'll run out of episodes before you run out of food. The big dinner box, only from Pizza Hut. No one out pizzas the hut. As we move toward a brighter future, HMSA is here to help you live your best life. Whether you see a doctor in person, online, or after hours, getting quality care is easy and convenient when you've got options. Choose a plan that fits your lifestyle and needs. Here at home or around the world, get the care you need. When the only constant is change, HMSA is here with you. For the good times, for the tough times, for lifetimes. Learn more at HMSA.com. People, Champ here, man. Want to remind you folks, check out the Champ Show right here on Spectrum OC 16. Johnny, we come on at 7 a.m., 3.30 p.m., and 1 a.m. Three times a day. Three times, baby. Three seven times. Seven days a week. Whoa. 84 times a month where we bring you the best in food, the best in product. We say on the Champ Show, if it ain't the best, we don't give it to you. Amen to that. Cool. Hi friends, if you are an expecting mom or know of one, this episode is filled with great information. We've got a healthy smoothie for pregnant moms and our dance and fitness expert shares an exercise for moms of all stages. We'll meet with the Aloha Diaper Bank to learn how they help keep our KK clean and dry one diaper at a time. And yes, you can be stylish while rocking a baby bump. We'll show you how on the next episode. Presented by the Sui Hero Electric Inc. The new season just dropped. Enter the big dinner box from Pizza Hut. Two pizzas, breadsticks, and wings all in one box. You'll run out of episodes before you run out of food. The big dinner box, only from Pizza Hut. No one out pizzas the hut. There you go. Good look at the pool here at the Duke of Hanamoku Aquatics Complex. First game or first match of three here today. It's uh, number five. UC San Diego taking on the fourth seed, UC Davis. 5-5 five, five through the first half. Femka, what did you see in the first half from both teams, and what do they need to do to pull out the victory and face Hawaii tomorrow? Um, I think San Diego really adjusted really well that second quarter. Davis is still strong, but I think in general on both sides, we're seeing a lot of steals, a lot of small mistakes that lead to turnovers, and I think if you minimize that, if you win that battle, you have less turnovers, less... Um, steals or balls being stolen then you you're winning this game so the teams will switch sides keep in mind uc davis with the dark caps and the white caps are uc san diego and the sprint is underway we're about ready to see what happens here in the third quarter it looks like uc san diego will control the swim off we have a three for the swim off for san diego here you know, when you switch sides, does it really make a difference? I mean, you are outdoors, so I would imagine there's a good and bad side, is there? Um, mainly the sun. So if the sun is lower, it's pretty high up right now, so it doesn't affect you as much, but sun and wind they, they are the main things. Some pools, they have stands behind one of the cages. Long Beach, for example, they have a stand right behind their cage. So if you're visiting and you're playing towards the men's water polo team that's behind the cage doing all sorts of oh, crazy yeah, things. Man. That's definitely a <laughs> disadvantage, I would say. There's a nice steal by UC San Diego. Everybody has to get back to their positions. Over on the right side, swimming with the ball. 
Here we see it's a quick setup here because most of the team was already down there on their offensive side. They have 20 more seconds to play here before the shot clock goes off, which is a lot of time actually. Doesn't sound like a lot, but it is when you're in the water. So 10 seconds on the shot clock. I'm gonna try to get it inside if you're UC San Diego. There's a long shot that drops in. That's gotta be the hat trick right there for Courtney Okamura. Yeah, wow. <laughs> Unexpected, but beautiful. Another lob shot. There's such a big advantage having that left hander on the right hand uh, on the right side. Um, the angle is just so much better than a right hander on that side. Keep in mind, these teams played three times. UC Davis won all three matchups. They played as recently as March 25th. If you take a look at that shot by the lefty again, just perfectly placed over the outstretched arms of the keeper. Love shots are so much harder than they look, and it's such a good skill to have. If you're really good at placing a love shot well, there's no goalie that can stop it. It's so hard for a goalie. So here, they say, finish this, up. This is the first lead for the trains here in this uh, matchup. Yeah, they're doing a good job of keeping uh, UC Davis. They're controlling UC Davis right now. They're forcing an outside shot. Ball into center forward here. She's turning, but ball on hand and head underwater. Defender with two hands up, and we see a steal there for UC Davis. Here we see a nice turn by number six. That is Emily I. I can And you can see Holly Main, who was the defender, just smiled. She's like, yeah, you got me. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lob shot into the back of the net. Not a lob shot. <laughs> That's Alyssa Langtat with the goal, her 31st on the year. She's uh, from Davis, California. We see Bujelli here. She's covering the near side for a hard, quick shot. And it makes it so hard to get that lob shot. You need to lunge back and really time it so well that you catch the ball as it is coming down inside your cage. Both these schools, super, super good academic institutions as well. And always solid in water polo too. I think yep. they're very consistent. Very tough to play against too. So these, are, these players aren't just good water polo players, but they're also good students as well. Here we see number five. That's wonderful. But an easy steal here. I was going to say one and one with the goalie right there, but it was an easy steal there. Long outlet pass to the far right side. There's Okamura. You got to keep an eye on her. She's got three goals already. And there we see an offensive foul. The center forward was Sierra Frankie was holding her defensive player, which was seen by the referee. Yeah, Frankie's been kept off the board in this one so far. She's the leader in goals for the trends of this season. But we do see others step up like Okamura. Right. She really stepped up right there. No doubt. Davis is having a hard time playing the ball around with a hard press and a steal here for San Diego. That's stolen by Holly Mayer. Back to the keeper, to Jelly, who wants it somewhere. Waiting to set up here a little bit. Looks like they're getting a little bit tired. Third quarter usually really is the hardest, I would say. Fourth quarter, you know you need to bring it home. Third quarter, you have to push through. And that one's stolen away by UC Davis. Alyssa Clegg with the steal. You know, you can hear both coaches yelling quite a bit. Can you hear them when you're in the pool? Um, sometimes, selectively. I was going to say. <laughs> Do you gotta... want to hear them? No. <laughs> <laughs> but I would imagine, I mean, you're swimming, you're battling, you're trying to focus. Definitely, it's yeah. Gotta be, it's got to be a little bit more difficult. It is definitely. Usually... When There's a shot opportunity, a nice! Oh. 
a nice block there. Two hands high. The jelly again with the save, and we'll get a timeout. Let's take a look again. The jelly's made a number of really nice saves in this one for the Tritons. Yeah, I would have gone maybe a skip shot there. She has her hands nice high up. Um, she, the offender goes to shoot right over the head of the goalie, Bujeli, but that's where her hands were at. I want to remind everybody, there's more water polo. We'll follow this one. We'll have a good matchup. Number two seed, UC Irvine. They'll be battling the number seed, CSUN. So that's coming up after this one. And then we'll have a third and final matchup a little bit later. But let's take a look at the uh, both goalies. I think have done a nice job. Nellie McAdams for UC Davis, the junior out of Atherton, California. We've seen her make a number of nice stops. Some really good shots there, but even nicer stops right there. And there you see the players all surrounding the UC Davis coach and listening up to the instruction. I mean, this is what you would expect from a four versus five matchup, a tight one. And it has been, except at the beginning of the match. It was three to one early, UC Davis after that first quarter. But since then, the Tritons have been pretty much playing even if not even ahead of UC Davis. Yeah, I think they're actually a little bit on top right now if I look at what they're putting in the water. Numbers-wise, yeah, definitely. Um, they're, they're just having a stronger say in what's going on. They're controlling Davis a little bit more in defense. Is it adjustments? Is that what the UC San Diego's made the, the better adjustments? I think so, yeah. I, I don't think Davis has changed a lot. They still play really solid, but I think um, San Diego's just doing a better job of putting more pressure on the ball and moving more in offense and forcing um, Davis to play defense and creating openings right there. There's a shot that's off the hands of the block attempt. And here we see a five meter penalty. She pushed off of someone. Not entirely sure what the referee was saying here, what happened. Um, but we do see a penalty foul. That was on Emily Aikamina. Uh, I keep saying that wrong, I'm so sorry. Aikama. So penalty shot coming. Taking the shot will be Courtney Okamura, I believe. I think it's Anika Oroya. Oh, okay. Monica Arroyo skips that one in. You're right. Monica Arroyo with the goal of sophomore Alventura. And the Titans take the lead back 7 6 now. That was an unexpected penalty shot, and I'm still not sure what happened there, but um, San Diego takes the lead. So you see Davis needs to answer that goal. See if they can. Davis playing with two center forwards right here. So you see two people on either post of the goal. And they're an exclusion drawn by Noel Weinbell. That is number 19 on San Diego. That is Kerr's couch. So power play right now for UC Davis. Swinging it around up top, back over to the right side. Trying to find that open player and a hole in the goal. And that one slapped away, so unsuccessful on the power play are the Aggies. And that goal was for Novell Weinbell. Did it go in? Yeah. Oh, gosh, <laughs> I thought it went out. I didn't think it went in. No, it did a quick one. It's a deflection shot right there. You're right. So most center forwards, they usually play in the post because they're so strong and um, Noel Weinbelt is 6'2", so she's very tall too, has a long reach as well. So really someone you can go to at the post there, right in front of the cage. And we're tied again, 7-7. Seven, seven. Two minutes in this quarter remaining.
San Diego struggling a little bit to finding an open player here. Yeah, they're being patient, though, which is yeah. the right thing to do. They've got a chance, got it inside, but it's stolen away. And this could have gone either way, an exclusion or not. That really depends on what the referee sees on her side and what is uh, happening with the ball and the defenders. Yeah, they're trying to get it into Frankie. But didn't work out. 80 seconds left in the third stanza. Tied at seven. Here we have 10 seconds on the shot clock. A lot of screaming going on. Nice shot. Blocked. And UCSD will get possession. It's a nice quick outlet pass here. Ball on the right side of the pool. Here they're getting organized. There's a lob shot into the back of the cage again. That's again Okamura. Okamura with her fourth goal. The freshman not playing like one, that's for sure. Yeah, she's playing very free, very careless in the good sense of the word. She is not feeling the pressure at all and just puts it away. Well, the breakout game for the freshman. With four goals here in the Big West Tournament. Uh, St. Francis High School in Los Angeles, California. 26 goals now on the year for her. Seven second differential between the game clock and the shot clock, so. Defense, there'll be some time left for UCSD regardless. Yeah, not a whole lot of time. Seven seconds is going to the other side of the pool, but actually that's not going to happen because we yep. see an exclusion foul. And there we see a goal. And another goal by Noel Weinbelt from the other post right now. A nice entry pass by Grace Pelkey and a deflection shot. You see it's kind of backwards. You see a nice goal and she just flicks it into the cage. Very quick, right? When she gets the ball to when she releases it. Yeah, yeah. So you don't really catch it actually. You just change the direction of the ball. So the ball has to have certain speed on it already and then you just change the direction. We see here a quick goalie change, which is not actually a goalie. It's a field player that is coming in. So we have 21 seconds. We have 21 seconds on the shot clock. So that means that the goalie can now play offense as well. So what a coach tends to do is put a player into that goalie position that can actually play offense to have the biggest advantage here on offense, seven on six. Who's not really a goalie. There's four seconds, three seconds. And they will not be able to get a shot off. And so, after three very entertaining quarters, it's UC Davis 8, UC San Diego 8. Coming up, the final quarter. What is the Big West? The Big West is where the Aloha spirit meets California cool. It's a place of unlimited opportunity on the court, in the classroom, and in the community. We're built different in the Big West. We find a way to win with hustle, heart, and hard work. What is the Big West? It's the place where dreams come true. The Big West. Only the bold. Power isn't born. It's built over time. For over 65 years, Hercules Tires has been providing the muscle to move more drivers. Whatever the vehicle, whatever the terrain, and we back it with a powerful protection plan. So wherever the road or the trail takes you, we have the selection, value, and strength to get you there. Hercules Tires, ride on our strength. In the Coast Guard, your career is in your hands. Become a chef, a highly skilled mechanic, operate boats, pilot planes, learn to lead. In the Coast Guard, you're a part of the bigger picture. Help others, protect our ports, secure our waters, defend our homes. Expand your options in the Coast Guard.
At Spectrum News, we're striving to help inform your community, providing the latest news from journalists right here in Hawaii, the local sports you love, and now the local news and weather that matter most to you. Download the all-new Spectrum News app, exclusively for Spectrum customers, your community connection. Back at the Duke Kahanamoku Aquatics Complex, the 2022 Big West Women's Water Polo Tournament. Here's the first one of the day, and it doesn't get any closer than this. Tied at eight there between these two teams. Let's take a look at the final standings in the Big West Conference. Uh, they play six games within a season. Hawaii, the only team to go unbeaten. They're the number one seed. There you see UC Irvine. They'll be up next, finishing at five and one. Then the three-way tie for third, Long Beach, UC Davis, UC San Diego. Long Beach got the tiebreaker because it went on point differential in terms of matchups. And there you see the other two teams as well. So here we go. Quarter number four, the final scheduled quarter of this one. Tied at eight, the swim off and the sprint and UCSD wins the sprint again. Four for four, yeah. So that can be an advantage. You start a game off um, every quarter, you start off with the ball, which might, might mean that you have an extra offense um, during that quarter. So it's pretty important. Yeah, yeah, especially if you have four for four. It comes more into play when, for example, there's an exclusion at the end of the previous quarter. Um, when you win the ball, then the player is still exclude, excluded for the remaining 20 seconds. Um, so you still ha you start a quarter off with a power play. This is Davis with a nice steal to begin the quarter. And water polo, anything goes. So until the final whistle is blown, you only know then who's winning, especially in a game like this. There might be four seconds on the clock and one team can be up and it can still be tight, so. There's a lob shot, slapped down nicely by Bugelli. Well, we had a feeling this would probably be the best matchup of the day, and it has lived up to billing so far. Yeah, yeah, number four and five. Even though they've seen each other three times and it's been one-sided for the wins for UC Davis, but I think San Diego has definitely grown in the season as well. When we saw them, they weren't as strong against Hawaii as I thought they would have been, but there's some really good stuff. That there's a long shot into the back of the cage. That is Taylor Onstott right there. Onstott with a terrific shot into the back left corner of that cage. I don't think uh, <laughs> I don't think McAdams was expecting the ball to come towards her cage quite yet. She wasn't ready for that. Jumped a little late. Maybe the reason why Ansa decided to shoot. We've seen a lot of shots that are made from outside here in this matchup from both teams. Definitely. I think especially Davis with such a strong center forward. Noelle Weinbelt, who <laughs> scores here just now as I'm talking about her. Um, she already has four goals, I think, on this game as well. Two power plays and two center forward goals. Just rips it backhand into the, into the net. Yeah, she's such a force down there, so you do see them double teaming on that center forward, trying for her not to get the ball, which failed in this, this defensive sequence, but... That, that's what forces these shots from outside. If people fall back into the center forward to double guard someone, you get openings up top. There you see a steal and a turnover. So you see Davis with the ball here. Yeah, bringing it down is uh, Clegg. Davis looking to bring the ball into a mine belt here again, and San Diego is falling back. That's what we call it when they drop down away from the player up top to defend the center with two people. You want to be right in the middle of your own player that has the ball up top and to that center forward so that there's no space for the ball to come into onto the water for the center forward. Goals big with the shot a little too high. And now the Tritons with the opportunity to retake the lead, tied at nine here in the final quarter. Skip shot is good. And that is number 17, Anika Arroyo, with the goal here for UC San Diego. 
Annika Royal, we've called her name a couple of times, had a goal on the uh, penalty shot. Yeah. Here, really nice skip shot. Skip shots are hard to, to guess for the goalie where they're going to end up. Are they going to be really high in the cage? Are they going to um, scatter onto, on top of the water and just kind of drift in? San Diego with the lead here, but still five minutes in this final quarter. Yeah, lots of time, no question yeah. about it. So on average, you have about one offense per minute and one defense per minute. So still five, at least five more chances to score. Shot clock under 10, it's at five and another Wasted opportunity for the Aggies. Nice field block here. And we get a timeout for UC San Diego. So right now it's 10-9 UC San Diego, 434 left to play on the clock. Momentum-wise, who do you feel right now has the momentum? Is it UC San Diego? I think so, and with them taking the timeout, this is this is going to determine, not determine the rest of the game, of course, but if they score here, it's a two-goal game and then you're really focusing on defense and playing full clock and still playing offense but uh, not giving anything away easy in offense if they miss here and it's a quick goal on the other side then the momentum will definitely shift towards davis i think if you score uh, after the other team's timeout well you see davis trying to get things going with longtime head coach jamie wright Let's take a look at Courtney Okamura because she has had a breakout game here in the Big West Tournament. Only a freshman. She has scored four times already. A lot of those from the outside. Some nice lob shots as well. Look at that one. That's a beautiful shot on the other side for UC Davis. How about Noelle Weinbelt? I mean, she's had a terrific night as well. She scored a handful, or terrific day, morning actually, <laughs> here in Hawaii. Has had a uh, had a terrific day as well. I mean, she has scored a handful of goals also. There you get a good look at number 12, Courtney Okamura. So the two teams in a timeout. Yeah, I, I don't think UC Davis has a left-hander on their team, especially not someone like Okamura. All right, let's take a look at some of the highlights from Weinbelt because she deserves it because she has been really the one that has made it happen for the Aggies in this one. Such a strong force right there. Really a go-to player. Again, inside and the quick, just kind of as you mentioned, they get the ball and they just kind of redirect it into the back of the net. Weinbelt definitely grew as a defensive player too and really can play now full game. And this is what you don't want. Here's a quick turnover after the timeout that San Diego just took. So it's Davis ball here. We see goalie sprinting back to her cage as well. She was at halfway. And I think if Davis can get a goal out here, that definitely swings the momentum a little bit back into her, their favor. Craig with the ball after retrieving from the Aaron pass. Back over to Clegg. Trying to look to get it inside if she can. Good defense by UCSD. Long shot. Ricochets in. So we see that the ball is being changed. The direction of the ball is being changed here by that shot block. Another freshman for UC San Diego right there, Lauren Bellavia. Freshman out of Dana Point, California. It looks like it went off one of the Aggie players. If you take a look at it again. Yeah, so sometimes it's better not to shot block. She's turned with her uh, body a little bit towards the cage, and the ball just goes off of her hand. She's not able to really stop that ball and knock it down right in front of her. So we have a tight game again, 10-10 with 3.38 on the game clock. There is overtime if you're curious. You have to because the winner has to play Hawaii tomorrow morning. <laughs> yeah, so it's not penalties or internationally they do go to penalty shots right after uh, four quarters. There's no overtime. But in the NCAA we see and two extra periods, two, two three-minute three minute minute periods. And, and then, then like, whoever scores next, if it's still tied, wins, right? Yeah, yeah. So after the two, uh, two three-minute overtime quarters, we get golden goal or sudden death. So whoever scores takes the game. 
There is an exclusion and a quick shot, but no goal. So Davis with the ball here. That's Frankie who was out with the ball. You know the Aggies want to get her. Oh, excuse me, not Frankie. That is uh, Langtat. Here we see another steal. Still going into the center, even though there's two, three people right in front of her. That just shows what, how used they are to going to Weinbelt right there. Two and a half minutes. Okamura has that shot blocked. Finally, the Aggies able to stop her. Good job by the keeper, McAdams. Yeah, that angle is really hard for her to shoot. Uh, Okamura, she's right onto the two meters. Not a big angle for her to shoot, and really only in one place she could have gone, and that's where the goalie, uh, McAdams, she knew where to go, and she did her job really well. Two minutes left, tied at 10. Whoever scores next could win this one in advance. Yeah, so it's, it'll be interesting to see if people are afraid to take shots now or if they're doing stupid things or smart things. So that's really what determines who's going to take this game, I think. You cannot be afraid to shoot, but you don't need to rush either. There's a long outlet shot that gets in. That's a beautiful goal. We'll see a Donick. We haven't seen her score yet, but she has a bar in right there. and. She's out of Auckland, New Zealand. First time we've called her name. Another freshman. I mean, there have been quite a few freshmen we've talked about, and we mentioned it earlier on this UCSD team, which I think, regardless of what happens in this one, bodes well for the future for their yeah. program. I think it's you can explain it probably with, um, first of all, COVID, of course. Recruitment has been harder. People have been staying longer. But with uh, San Diego being so new to the Big West, it does attract more people and better water polo players. Um, so I think that's why they have so many young girls and maybe some COVID red shirts or uh, uh, COVID freshmen as well. And of course, UCSD with the full allotment of eight scholarships. Yeah, it's a big, big plus for a team to to scout and getting players to come. All right, we kind of take a, a peek into what's going on here with the chalkboard. Well, not the chalkboard, but the grease board. The whiteboard, yeah. The whiteboard. <laughs> So it might look really messy to you, but the, go the players know exactly what's being drawn. They've practiced this probably 18 million times in practice. Um, they're down by one, 137 on the, on the game clock. So anything can happen. If you don't score this one, you can still play good defense and have another chance. You probably, if you're UC Davis, you probably have at least two more possessions. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, goal is to really not rush anything right now and try to really get that goal and then play a good defense regardless play a good defense davis has another timeout in, up in their sleeve too so if they do miss and they stop the defense i'm sure they'll will we'll be seeing another timeout on their side so this is a big possession for the Aggies. You almost feel like they need to, even though they'll probably get another, they will get another possession. You almost feel like they need to score here. Yeah, I think mentally too, if you don't score this one, you know you have to stop the yes. next, next defense. So you know you have to stop uh, San Diego after this one, regardless you do, but there's so much more pressure on it. So here we see a lot of movement that was drawn out on the whiteboard. We see Novell up top here, so I'm assuming she's going to... Do we get an offensive? Yeah, it's an offensive, I think, because she was swinging the ball around. I'm not too sure. Some of the calls that are being made this morning, I'm not too sure what is meant by them. But San Diego with the ball here. So that's another timeout wasted. <laughs> Haven't been very successful on timeouts. Previous San Diego timeout was a quick turnover as well. Here we see San Diego really playing the clock, but an offensive foul here, so Davis with the ball. So back-to-back -back offensive fouls on each team. Under a minute to play, 11-10 UC San Diego. Davis with the ball. 
And here we saw Jamie Wright, who was looking if there was something quick in the counter attack. There was not so another timeout for UC Davis. Well, you look at the clock. There's 47 seconds left, 23 seconds left on the shot clock. So you know that UC San Diego's gonna get the ball back. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. But you're down by one. You gotta score. You, you have, this, you have, you have to, to score this possession Definitely. or it's pretty much over. Yeah, yeah. If you don't score this, what they'll do, I think there's another 30 second timeout probably that uh, San Diego will call when they get the ball so they can spread out nicely and they will just run the clock down. So it's all or nothing right now in this offense and the girls know this, but it doesn't change anything on the game being played. You still need to put the, go the ball in the back of the goal. Do you see a more intense game here today than you would during the regular season with it being a tournament? You can tell, right? Yeah, I, mean, I think so. I yeah. think the stakes are higher, and I think both teams are just, they're doing really well. I think both teams, um, they've made adjustments according accordingly to whatever they were facing today. Now, keep in mind, the winner of this one will play Hawaii tomorrow morning, 11 a.m. Hawaii time. Hawaii, the number one seed, and because there are seven teams that play water polo in the Big West, only the number one seed gets the bye. Yeah. Yeah, previous years it used to be the first two seats. So oftentimes that was Irvine and Hawaii. And last year only five teams advanced because of still COVID protocols and things like that. And Hawaii did win that tournament. Hawaii's won the last two Big West Conference tournaments. I would like to go as far as oh yeah, to know because I didn't play during COVID. Yes, there was, there was no 2020. <laughs> I was going to say no, 20 years when I was a senior. <laughs> 2019 and 2021, you're right. So here we see Davis with the ball. Let's see what they're doing. They're just playing a normal offense, it seems to be, with a little bit of movement here. Still looking for Noel at center. Five seconds left on that shot clock. They're going to have to try a long shot, and it gets in. <laughs> So that is Emily Aikema with the goal here. So 25 second shot clock turned off for UCSD to win this one in advance. That was a hard, strong shot. We're gonna get some fresh bodies into the pool for UCSD. And here we see again that goalie switch, which is actually a player coming into the field here where we will be seeing a seven on six. So it is sort of a power play, mm -hmm. but no one is excluded. But we do see an extra player on the UC San Diego side. So here we go. 25 seconds to win it or 25 seconds to go into overtime. What you don't want to do is what we've seen earlier in this game. You don't want to give up the ball so that they have an easy shot into an open cage. There's Okamura. The lefty holding the ball up. Six seconds, five seconds, three seconds. They're gonna have to try a long shot. That one bounces over the cage and we're going to overtime. How about that? The first match of the tournament is gonna go to OT. As it's UC Davis 11, UC San Diego 11. We'll come back with the extra period. Hey, how's it going? You got Lanai with Cooking Hawaiian Style, presented by Aloha Mortgage Advisors. And this week in the kitchen, look who's with us, Mr. Olympian. Hey, Mana Reynolds will be joining us. What are you going to make? I'll be making my grandma's famous poisson couche. She Ooh. taught me how to make that nice. since I was young. And just chicken long rice, something my family always made me as a kid. Who makes it the best? I do. You do. All right, so we got family recipes, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> make sure you check out your local listings for times. It's Cooking Hawaiian Style with Hey, Mana Reynolds. <laughs> In next week's episode of Old Team Stand, we'll be starting a brand new season. We'll be taking the Hawaii people to Kyushu. Kyushu no mae ni narita kukou de oishi osoba to tempura tabemashita. Ooh, it's so good. And then we're going to beautiful Yutoku Inari Shrine and then have a wonderful tofu lunch there. Don't miss it. So remember, follow me as you can experience Japan like you've never, never done before. On this week's show, we honor cultural practitioners and scientists who help us take better care of our ocean. We'll hear from the late Dr. Isabella Abbott, a well-respected ethnobotanist specializing in limu. We'll visit with scientists learning about Mauna Loa Bay. 
We'll go to Kauai with the Ko'olau Limu Hui, and we'll hear from Uncle Mac Poi Poi on Molokai. Tune in to Outside Hawaii, only on Spectrum OC 16. 100% original, 100% local. Aloha, everybody. I'm Howard Dushetsky, and on the next edition of Sports People Hawaii, we meet a superstar from Iolani School, captain of the tennis team, and a musician who's now writing his own music that his peers play. Also, we go inside the tube with Clark Little to see what keeps him chasing that perfect shot after so many years of being punished by Mother Nature. We'll see you with these stories and more on the next Sports People Hawaii, Saturdays at 7 and only on Spectrum OC16. What a way to spend your Thursday morning slash afternoon. First matchup of the day in the Big West Women's Water Polo Championship Tournament. And look at that. We're going to overtime. UC San Diego 11, UC Davis 11. Explain what the rules are for overtime. So for overtime, we see first two three-minute quarters. We will be switching after the first quarter of overtime. So they will switch sides to make it as equal as possible. And then after those two three-minute quarters, we either have a winner, or if we don't, we will go to sudden victory. So whoever scores the first time after those two three-minute quarters will take the win. Well, we looked at it, this on paper today and said, you know what? This is probably gonna be the one that is the most competitive, at least you would think, with the four and five seeds. And well, you can't get more competitive than tied after regulation, can you? Definitely, and I think their, their playing styles are somewhat similar too, so they're very even in the, the matchup. And how much how much do you think having played three times already impacts the, uh, the way these two teams are facing off? I think it definitely does impact you a lot. You can get, um, if you, you've won three times, you might be thinking that you got it and you've won already three times, but that might even light the fire for UC San Diego, who has lost three times, and they really want to do it now to show that they are better, that they can win against UC Davis. Well, it is the first meeting in Big West Conference tourney play for these two, so it is going to be a historic one. UC San Diego's only been in one tournament game last year. They were the number two seed, but got upended by UC Irvine. All time, UC Davis is nine and 19 in the Big West tournament. It'll be interesting to see here. You don't really want to um, defend here on the referee too much. In the decide the game for the bo for both teams mm -hmm. so we might see a little more physical a little less exclusion um. well and also keep in mind they're gonna have another sprint and san diego has been successful yeah. on the sprint so when you have three minute quarters as you mentioned when you get the ball first that could give you an extra possession that, that could be huge in the in the outcome of this one definitely and especially if we do see a tight game after those two overtime quarters during the sudden death or sudden victory. Um, if you get that ball first, that's a huge advantage. All right, the horn has blown. We're about ready for the whistle to blow from the official. And here we go, the swim off. We'll see who wins the sprint. And it looks like again, hey. who's got it? It's a fight for it, and Davis wins Dave's the sprint the here in overtime. And what a time to win the sprint. A quick entry pass to Noel Weinberg, Be Weinbelt there with a backhand shot, but that was blocked by Bugelli. I mean, it's 11-11, but I think both goalkeepers have done a really good job here today. Definitely, yeah. There's been a lot of lob shots, which are one of the hardest shots. And then we, we've seen some quick power play goals, and we've seen some deflections, um, change of directions of shot blockers, too. Nice movement there by UCSD, but they get that one swiped. Yeah, ball in hand right there. The referee's um, showing that ball was in hand, so no foul or exclusion right there. Davis with the ball. Clegg being guarded. And just keep in mind, these girls have played four by eight minutes, and that's a lot of water polo already. It's 32 minutes, which takes about twice as long. And then you have to play another two quarters. That ball blocked and taken by the Tritons. 
Yeah, that's a lot of swimming. That's a lot of exerting energy, no doubt. Definitely. And something to mention, too, the exclusions, you get three, and then you're out of the game. The maximum of three exclusion fouls. You can be replaced after those three, but you're personally not allowed to get back into the pool. And so those carry over into the overtime. So if you already have two or three exclusions, you're not allowed to participate in the overtime if you have three already. You're talking about an individual player getting yeah. an exclusion, right? Yeah, 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 exactly. So that's at 20 seconds going to the corner, what we actually see right now. So we see a power play for UC San Diego, six on five. And they're bringing out a post player here. They're looking There's for a shot. nice block by McAdams of the shot by Okamura. Ball didn't really get to the other side of the pool, so defense was really focused on the ball. That was nice defense right there. Defensively, you really want to use both sides of the pool to pull apart the defense and see where the holes fall. Hungerford. Swimming with the ball, the lob shot, and it doesn't cross into the cage. Nice idea, just couldn't negotiate it in. So the ball has to go all the way over the goal line in completion, so it did, it did hit the post here, but it was bar out. Here we see a nice inside pass. And just an ordinary foul there. 20 seconds left in the quarter, 13 on the shot clock. Nobody has scored in this first overtime. We hear Kruijskamp say, use it all. You don't want to give away the ball too early. Another save by McAdams. We so. have three seconds on the game clock. And that first overtime goes quickly. And so when we come back, the second three-minute overtime knotted up at 11 hole, uh, UC Davis and UC San Diego. Mom, what? Hey, I only said I'm covering your down payment. I talked to my banker, Ryan. I can use my home equity. Are you trying to make me cry? Everyone needs a Ryan in their life. Get your banker at ASBHawaii.com. At Taco Bell Hawaii, the shredded Kahlua pork, grilled stuffed burrito, double XL quesadilla, and nachos bel grande are back. Spread the word, Kahlua pork is back, only at Taco Bell Hawaii. When you drive a Honda, the adventures go on and on. Follow your adventures with the thrilling performance of Honda. The brand owners are calling the most fun to drive. Hurry into a local Honda dealer where new vehicles are arriving daily. You know, your grandpa taught me how to tie a hook. You just run the line through the hole, pull it tight, and there you go, right? Okay, so let's cast one. Some lessons you teach are unintentional, like teaching your son the go-to spot for supplies when you're in a tricky situation. Lucky for us, our longs has everything we need. Make longs a part of your day. Today, the journey to crown a champion kicks off with a quarterfinal doubleheader. It's the Big West Conference Men's Volleyball Tournament, only on Spectrum Sports. Back at the Duke Kahanamoku Aquatics Complex, beginning the second overtime of the first match of the day. Hawaii UC Davis knotted up at 11. Neither team scored in the first three minute overtime. So we'll see what can happen here in the second. If they happen to go in uh, tied after the second overtime, then you go to a golden goal situation, kind of like a uh, sudden victory. Whoever scores first wins. So we'll see what happens. Yeah, um, so keep in mind the teams have switched sides again, so they will be going to the other direction if they were before. So the second overtime, we'll have another sprint to the ball. UC Davis won the sprint in the first overtime, but couldn't do anything with it. 
Let me get the whistle. And the beginning of the sprint. Here comes the swim off. The ball will be dropped. And UCSD controls the ball here in overtime number two. Ball here for UCSD. Let's see what they can do. Both teams were a little bit watching each other played last quarter, I would say, less the first overtime quarter. Is it when you get into overtime, particularly in a situation like this, if you're an athlete, are you kind of, you don't want to be the one to make a mistake? Exactly. You don't, you do want to be the one that wins the game for mm -hmm. you, but you don't want to be the one that makes the mistake. That went off the crossbar. Davis ball here. So McAdams whips that one all the way down to the other side of the pool. And that's a nice outlet pass there, and they can play offense right off of that pass. And here we see they're being a little segment, and coach is calling to move, 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 and open something up. Going Eight. to Weinbelt here. Eight seconds left on that shot clock, and it's stolen away by UCSD. Well, this has been about as even as it can get, and it's been even in overtime so far as well. So the sudden or sudden victory, they will also be played in quarter style. So it's uh, three minutes again, but whoever scores first. So sometimes you see that they go into eight, nine. Nice quarter. pass lobbed in. The shot is blocked. McAdams again with a nice play. A little less than a minute and half left. That two. pass too far. And the jelly will get it, the keeper for UCSD. That was a nice steal here. She really kept an eye on the ball and saw that it was a long pass on the water and it was within reach. Made the right decision there to get out of her cage. Trying to get it inside. And here we see just an ordinary foul. As I briefly mentioned, the referees don't want to decide the game for them, so they generally let let things go a little bit further than they would during the regular four quarters. Ten seconds left on the shot clock. Under a minute left to play in the second overtime. They're saying to shoot it now, and that one is knocked down. That was Frankie there. Yeah, they moved Frankie from the center to the outside. Yeah, she's been uh, guarded very well throughout this game. We haven't seen her a lot. Here we see a quick shot for Davis and a nice shot block. That was a really big opportunity right there. And we're going to get a timeout, I believe, as the horn blows. And it looks like uh, UC San Diego is going to call their timeout. So 28 seconds left on the game and the shot clock. So you score you win i mean that's yeah. <laughs> pretty much what you would think would happen yeah here. so definitely uh realistically only san diego will be able to get a shot off the remaining of this quarter so it's really up to them now are they going into sudden victory or are they taking it right here do you pull your goalie um not until i would say the last 10 seconds or so i'm i'm not sure how big of an advantage it is to me you, you never practice playing seven on six you've practiced maybe a couple plays every practice but you're so used to playing that six on six so to me it's a bigger advantage to just really know what the six players are doing and you don't want to risk anything anything stupid here either where you bring in your extra player or your goalie and then when you do lose that ball it'll be an easy goal for Davis so well Nelly McAdams the goalkeeper for UC Davis she's been in goal all game long the junior of Atherton California and she knows how big a night or day this is and look at that even as pooped as she probably is she's able to get up with that left hand and direct the ball away from the cage both goalkeepers have been in the cage the entire game yeah very similar uh, style the goalies have i would say. wingspan i would guess it's hard to see from here but um, they jump really well they're good on their legs and they are definitely a big advantage for both teams John McAdams with 10 saves in this one. So 28 seconds left. If neither team scores, we'll go to that golden goal 
situation, the uh, sudden death or sudden victory, as you want to call it. Let's see what San Diego is doing. So they will be bringing in that extra goalie, but they're running down the clock first. So they probably have a play for only 10 seconds or less, really minimizing the chance of Davis getting an opportunity to get the ball and shoot. The coach yelling out how much time is left on the clock. And here we see an exclusion. So fun fact, it is illegal to splash water in your opponent's face. And, and there's a shot, and there's a goal by UC San Diego. Now, I believe that is Kendall Thomas that she came in, but I might be wrong, so forgive me if I am. Um, as they switched caps right there, and so she's she not going to be on. Take a look at it again. She came in, kind of what we suspected. They pulled the goalkeeper. They did. They brought her in, and she gets the goal. She was aware of the clock. There were only a couple seconds left, and she wasn't afraid to shoot. She just went all for it. So here we will see Noel Weinbelt getting the ball and trying to shoot within that clock. One second, it goes wide, and UC San Diego advances as they defeat UC Davis by the final of 12 to 11. UC San Diego moves on to the semifinal tomorrow at 11 a.m. We'll take on the number one seed, University of Hawaii. Don't forget, coming up in a bit, we'll have more. Coming up at 11.45, it's the number two seed, UC Irvine, battling number seven, CSUN. Until then, for FEMCA, I'm Scott. Aloha. Thank you.